Well, we've got a nice topic for you today. This is called square root functions and their graphs. So take good notes, um, have that calculator handy, and enjoy. Exercise 1. Consider the two functions f of x equals the square root of x and g of x equals the square root of x plus 3 minus 2. A. Graph y equals f of x without the use of your calculator. Label its equation. So I'm going to make a quick table of values. All right, so this is my x, this is my f of x. Remember, f of x is fancy for y. And I'm just going to plug in numbers that I actually know the square root of. So I'm going to start with 0. And the square root of 0 is 0, of course, because 0 times 0 equals 0. I'm going to use 1. The square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. The next number I know the square root of is 4, and I'm hoping that's the same one you picked. The square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. What's the next square root you know? The next number I can think of is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So I'm only going to plot these nice points. Um, at 0, I have 0. At 1, I have 1. At 4, I have 2. And at 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I have 3. Okay. Can I take the square root of a negative number? Is that allowed? No. So we're not going to have any negative numbers on our radical x graph. And I'm just going to smoothly connect them. So hopefully your graph looks like this. Now this is going to go out forever, so we're going to stick an arrow on the end. And notice it's just getting bigger little by little, and it's going to grow pretty slow. Part B says use your calculator to generate a table of values for g of x. So g of x is this red equation up here. On the same grid and label its equation. Start your table at negative 10 to see certain values of x not in the domain of this function. So you are grabbing your calculator, okay, you are just typing in this g of x function, and you're going to plot those points. So pause it, and I just want you to remember, just plot the nice points. So you can see my equation in red there, and it does say label it, so I'm going to call this one g of x, and I'll switch back and label this one f of x. Okay, now I had some ugly points, and I did not waste my time plotting those. I just plotted the nice numbers. All right, now you should notice something similar that's happened in our absolute value and our quadratics. From this original black graph, starting at the origin, where is this graph being shifted? Take a look. This outside 2 should shift you down 2, that was your vertical shift, and this inside 3 should be a left shift of 3. So if I go down 2 and left 3, bam, that's exactly where I'm supposed to be based off the shifts we've talked about. Part C says state the domain and range of each function using set builder notation. So let's start with the black graph and talk about its domain. Remember, I'm looking whoops, at my x values. okay? And I just want to stress when we say domain, it's always min, comma, max, smallest to largest. So when I look at these x values, the smallest x value is 0, and it goes on forever. Okay, so I would say from 0 to forever. So one way to represent that in set builder notation is to say all the x values are greater than or equal to 0. Now notice I use equal to because I have a nice solid point there from my table. Now let's talk range. Range, of course, is my y values, and I still have to do min comma max, min first, then max. So my lowest value is 0, and it's going to grow up forever. So I would say all my y values have to be greater than or equal to 0. Now let me stress the min and max in interval notation. I would say that 0 to infinity, 0 is going to get a bracket, parenthesis around my infinity. Again, this one is 0 to infinity as well. Now let's do the same for g of x, our red graph. All right, we'll talk about it in set builder notation first and then interval notation. In set builder notation, all the x values are greater than or equal to, hopefully you've guessed it, negative 3. Looking at my x values, my smallest is negative 3. All the y values for range are greater than or equal to 
the lowest height it goes to is negative 2. Now, put that in interval notation, I would say negative 3 to infinity, bracket, parenthesis, and then negative 2 to infinity, bracket, parenthesis. Notice my min and my max. Min, max. Exercise 2. Which of the following equations represent the graph shown below? Now, to me, this is one of the easiest questions I could ever see on my exam. Basically, you have a graphing calculator. You just need to take the time and carefully oops, type each of these in your calculator. Obviously, you are going to y equals, and you are just typing them in and hitting zoom 6. That is your standard 10 by 10 window. Okay, and I'm just typing each one in to see what I get. And I'm going to let you do that on your own and find the one that matches correctly. Exercise 3. Which of the following values of x does not lie in the domain? Well, we've already talked about this. When I take a square root, what type of number do I need to have under there? Okay, hopefully you've said a positive number. And that's what I want to see in your notebook. I need the square root of a positive number. So anybody that gets me a negative under there would not be in my domain. And I'm just going to go through each of my choices and write down what I get. If I plug a 6 into x, 6 minus 5 is 1. Taking the square root of 1 is allowed. Choice 3. If I plug in a 5, I'm going to get the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is allowed. That is not a negative number. If I plug in 2, I'm going to get the square root of negative 3. Am I allowed to take the square roots of negative? Well, no. So that, of course, is my answer. And lastly, if I type this one, I'd have the square root of 2, which isn't pretty, but it's allowed. So anybody that gets you a negative is not in the domain. Exercise 4. Determine the domain for each of the following square root function functions. Express your answer using interval notation. All right. Now, we do need to slow down here. We just said we can't have a negative number. So I want you to think about this, and let's start this in our notebook. If you're not negative, okay, if you're not negative, that means you are greater than or equal to zero. Now remember, you are allowed to equal zero. If you equal zero, you're not negative. So if you are not negative, you are greater than or equal to zero. So basically what we're saying is anybody under the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. So to find the domain, I'm just going to say x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to solve for x. So I would say subtract 2, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, so now I can check it. If I take the square root of, let's say, negative 3, is that in my, my domain here? No, negative 3 is not bigger than negative 2, and look what happens. I would get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So negative 3 is not allowed. So I can only pick numbers bigger than negative 2. The other way to say that, of course, is negative 2 to infinity. Min, max, bracket, parenthesis. Let's try the next one. Whatever's under there... 3x minus 2 has to be positive, which means greater than or equal to 0. Solve. 3x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Divide by 3. x has to be greater than or equal to 2 thirds. So you may not get a pretty number, but that's okay. That is your domain. All the x values have to be greater than or equal to 2 thirds. Now, here comes a nasty trick. Star C in your notebook. Okay, whatever's under there, just like we said, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, now watch what happens. I'm going to subtract eight, so I get negative two is greater than or equal to negative eight. And here's where the trick comes in. Here's what we're writing in our notebook. If you divide or multiply by a negative, you have to flip the sign. 
If you divide or multiply by a negative, you have to flip the sign. So I'm just going to rewrite that problem down here. I have negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Now I can subtract and that's fair, but now I have to divide by negative 2. So you have to be smart enough to catch that and say, whoa, hold up, bear trap. x is less than or equal to positive 4. Flip the sign. All right, so again, I can say my min would be negative infinity to 4 because I'm picking numbers less than 4, bracket this, parenthesis this guy. Watch that bear trap. Exercise 5. Consider the function f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 4x minus 12. Using your calculator, sketch the function on the given axes. Alright, so all you're doing is you're going to your y equals, and you're typing this in. Square root, um, x squared plus 4x minus 12. Go to your table, and plot those values. So pause it, grab your calculator, and let's plot those. Notice I put arrows on the end of my graph because it does go on forever. Kind of a funky looking graph. Part B, set up and solve a quadratic inequality that yields the domain of f of x. Now that might sound confusing, but it's pretty simple. I'm going to take, remember I have that square root of x squared plus 4x minus 12, and the domain just describes the x values. And we just said a couple slides ago that whatever you have under here has to be positive. And the way we represent positive is to say that that junk under there is greater than or equal to zero. Now remember, you can equal zero because zero is not negative. So greater than or equal to zero. At this point, we just solved these the other day. I'm just going to pretend it's an equal sign, and I'm going to factor this. So I'm saying multiplies to 12, adds to 4. I'm going to go with 6 and 2. Now if I'm multiplying to a negative, that means the signs are different, but it adds to a positive. So I'm going to go plus 6 and minus 2. Tee it up. x plus 6 equals 0. x equals negative 6. x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2. Now, because it truly was an inequality, that's because I need to, excuse me, that tells me I need to stick it on a number line. Remember, smallest to largest, and we're just going to test some points. On this side, I'm going to test negative 7. 0 is between those two numbers. I'm going to test 3 on this side. Um, keep in mind, if I look back here, I had an equal to, so I know I have closed circles. Now, I'm just going to plug those into my original. So my equation was x squared plus 4x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to start with my 3 and substitute that in. That's 9 plus 12 minus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. 9 is greater than or equal to 0, I would say is true, so I'm going to shade this way. I'm going to test 0. I get 0 plus 0 minus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. Negative 12 is not greater than or equal to 0. That's false. And then I'll test negative 7. Hopefully you get a true as well. So now I can state the domain. And that's what we were doing the whole time. We were describing the x values. I would say these x values are less than or equal to negative 6. Or I can go the other way and say these x values are greater than or equal to 2. Remember, if you go two ways two separate equations you're writing. Now we can use the interval notation and say that's really negative infinity to negative 6. Notice my min and my max union. My min is 2, my max is infinity. Min, max. And I made one little mistake. Um, notice those were closed circles. Let's make sure we have brackets around those two numbers. Well, believe it or not, that does it for us tonight. Take real good notes on that domain, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.